Hello and welcome to the NBA Minutes to Win It podcast. I'm Big Italy 42. He's Jason Gilbo at jgilbo11. Got a nice slate of action tonight, 10 games, and obviously there are some injury concerns, not quite as many as we've seen recently, so that's that's always a plus. We don't have to worry as much about things, but one guy in particular we'll get to in a little bit. We certainly have to worry about him. Um, as far as point guards go, injuries, Jeff Teague has a sprained left ankle, but he's listed as probable. Not a guy that was really on most people's radars for tonight anyway. Um, hasn't been playing many minutes either way. Um, Jameer Nelson missed the last game, but practiced yesterday, and they say will be available for today, whatever that means. Um, I assume that he's going to be fine to go. Jared Bayless, not officially out, but he imagine he's going to be out. Ty Lawson is going to be coming back tonight. After Sober? Finishing. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> after another suspension. Um, this is the kind of thing... It, um, Josh Gordon's probably pr- pretty pissed off by now because if uh, this is the NFL, then uh, Ty Lawson's lucky he's even on, allowed to play. But um, obviously there's a lot more games in the NBA, so that, that's that's Ty Lawson's uh, lucky part, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully hopefully he stays sober. But yeah. I mean, Either how, way, many chan- how many chances is he going to get? I mean, well, come on. let's be honest. If you're playing him, you're probably not sober. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> not on this slate, at least. Um, there are a lot of really good options at point guard. Obviously, you got Westbrook. Against Dallas, I mean, that's not even fair. Um, there is indication that maybe some Dallas players sit because it is a back-to-back. We've seen this before. And Jerome Williams. Williams. Yeah, Dirk Nowitzki. So keep your eye on that because all of a sudden this game that could be close and looks like a potential for a really nice fantasy output game if all of a sudden guys sit. I mean, Dirk's probably the most likely to sit in this one, especially because the game went to overtime last night. But um, Westbrook's a guy that's easily GPP only for me if uh, if all those guys sit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, last time, I mean, it was a an OT game last time. I think mean, it was just a week ago, and, and all three guys set Wes Matthews, Deron Williams, and Dirk. Um, you saw Dwight Powell come in, and he played really well. And I think he ended up with over, over 35 DK points that night for really cheap. So if Dirk does sit, he pops up on the radar. And um, I think Parsons, I think Parsons is the only one who probably won't sit. So. Yeah. He'll run that offense. Yeah, he'll run that offense, but he's got to face Kevin Durant. So yeah. um, at least, I mean, size-wise, he's similar to Durant. So it's not not too much of a disadvantage as it would be for most guys. But yeah. um, other point guard options, you got to love what Damian Lillard's doing recently. Played very well against Utah the first time he faced them as well. Um, four games back, struggled the first game. But since then, if we're talking FanDuel, 44-9, 63.6, and 49.9 fantasy points. Unbelievable finish to the last game against Oklahoma City. It was just lighting it up. So now facing off against Utah and Nito, Burke, whoever he ends up <laughs> facing, I mean, good luck stopping Damian Lillard. I mean, obviously, takes away a little bit now that you got Rudy Gobert back um, down low. But, I mean, Lillard's got – he's he's plenty fine taking jump shots, and I think he'll be all right tonight. Yeah. I mean, he's taken 48 three-pointers in the last four games. So – if Rudy Gobert, if he can't reach out to the three-point line, then I think Lillard's okay. Maybe he can. He's got some pretty <laughs> long arms. But, I mean, you got to love Lillard, though. Yeah. Um, Curry, of course. we got Draymond Green is not officially out, but they're saying he's going to sit. I don't know why they don't just say he's officially out, but he's likely to sit, they say, today and the next game. So, um, obviously, Curry against Denver. This game's only a nine-point spread. You hope it stays close. Certainly possible that Steph Curry, by himself, uh, he and Clay Thompson could still blow this team out, but... Got to imagine a little bit of a bump in usage for both these guys. So he's he's very cash game playable for me still tonight. Oh, definitely. I think Curry's one of my favorite. I think outside of Lord, Curry's my second favorite point card tonight. And like you mentioned, without Draymond Green, ball's going to be in his hands a little bit more. going to be a little more shots for Curry. Um, and, of course, in this matchup, I mean, he was going to be in play anyway. Yeah, absolutely. A um, couple other guys. Rajon Rondo, got to consider him here. Um Drew Holiday and Tyreek Evans are kind of secondary plays for me. Neither one was great last night. Um, but recency bias for everyone being mad that they didn't go off certainly could keep their ownership a little bit lower here. Um, but one cheap guy that I like, uh, Manuel Moutier. He's right around 5K on both sites. Not a guy that's going to go and give you huge numbers. But if you need a punt, I mean, it's the highest total in the night. It's expected to be close until late. And Jameer Nelson is expected to be back. But you still think Moutier will get into the 30s in minutes and... Um, played really well both times he's faced Golden State this year. Yeah, definitely. He's a great cheap play. I mean, his usage was high um, before the injury, so I think that'll continue to be the same. And for that price tag, I mean, there's not a lot I'm loving down low anyway, so I think he's probably my favorite value option. Yeah, absolutely. Um, shooting guards, we might have a injury that's kind of taken the opposite turn. Brad Beal is a game-time decision for tonight, which 
you don't like um, because obviously John Wall, not 100% anyway. They say he's dealing with some knee soreness anyway. And then if Brad Beal comes back, it just kind of takes a lot away from um, the Washington side. You already got Marcin Gortat, who's out for tonight. We'll get to him in a couple minutes. But Brad Beal news we likely are not going to get until right before tip-off. So that's a situation that I'm just not a big fan of at all. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably not going to run many Washington players anyway tonight with the full slate, but um, I don't think Beal comes back and sees a ton of minutes anyway, even if he does play. Yeah. Um, Rodney Stuckey's also out, um, probably because he didn't want to have to face that Boston backcourt. But um, So Monte Ellis gets a slight bump, but I'm still not a huge fan of him or really any point guards against Boston, or any, any point guard, shooting guards, any kind of guard, I guess, against Boston here. So I think... If you're paying up, I like Clay Thompson a lot, especially on FanDuel, priced a little bit cheaper. And um, certainly can always consider James Harden in this spot, but, I mean, the guy just has not even come close to hitting value recently. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's, I mean, it's a good matchup, I guess. I mean, it's going to be a, a decent pace game, and I just can't I can't pony up the dough for Harden right now. It's just it's hard to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I always want to have at least one share in tournaments, but that's probably the extent of it for tonight. Yeah. Um, Rodney Hood has been playing well in the games that he's played. Uh, did sit out a game two games ago, but he's a guy you can certainly consider. CJ McCollum's been a solid defender, so you you worry a little bit about that there. But I mean, Rodney Hood's had a pretty high usage rate. If um, more so, if we see a guy like Derek Favors, who has seemingly been a game time decision for the last year, um, if he sits, then Rodney Hood's certainly in play. Yeah, definitely. I like I like Hood a lot. Um, you know, he's played Portland twice. He's averaged fourteen five. Uh, and four and two games against them. So, I mean, he's a solid cash game play, I think. But I do like him a little bit more if Favors does sit, just because there's a little bit more usage to go around. Yeah, absolutely. Um, other options at shooting guard, you got the Jamal Crawford, J.J. Redick situation. I don't I don't love either guy, but they're both pretty cheap, especially Crawford, if you want to take a shot on that. But, I mean, it is Miami, solid defensive team. So I'm not going out of my way to play either guy. I think um, – the other guy I probably would be looking at here is Kent Bazemore. Um, Kent Bazemore has been playing pretty well and small shooting guard on uh, on Fanduel, small forward on DraftKings, but under six K. And I mean, facing the Charlotte team, it's a good defensive team, but I mean, individual matchup, it's uh, you expect that Bazemore should still be able to do pretty well tonight. Yeah, and to kind of go reverse roles, if you're looking on DK, Middleton, small forward on Fanduel, shooting guard on DK has been uh, really solid shooting the ball well lately. Um, you know, against a Washington team that doesn't really defend either position um, very good. Yeah. Um, Kevin Durant at small forward. He's another one of those guys hasn't really been hitting value recently, despite the fact that he's gone 24, 28, and 30 real points last three. Been right around 40 fantasy points. I mean, he's got that nice high floor, but another situation, watch these Dallas guys because if they're sitting, you just don't see a way that Dallas keeps it close without all their top guys in there. Um, Carmelo Anthony left last night's game with an ankle injury. He was on fire, continued to play really well, but um, he's he's questionable for tonight. X-rays were negative, so monitor that situation, but we don't have any news on that quite yet. So um, I, I don't think we'll he see. plays. It's the yeah. Nets. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's Lopez versus Lopez is what people want to see tonight anyway. Oh, yeah. So this yeah. is not a Carmelo game. <laughs> but, I mean, although if Carmelo was healthy and playing, I certainly would like him. But um, Gallinari is another guy who's played re- really well against – Golden State played very well since he's come back from his injury as well. So he's a guy that I'm looking at. Similarly priced, Nicholas Batum, certainly a guy that I'm, I'm looking at as well. Yeah, definitely. We were talking earlier, I think that Charlotte-Atlanta game is kind of sneaky for, for tournaments because you got some high upside plays. and I mean, there's a nice 204 uh, Vegas total on that game. So um, should be plenty of fantasy options for really mid-range prices. Yeah. Um, excuse me. One more guy who I think is interesting for tournaments Played actually really well in his last couple games. 75 minutes with no turnovers. Um, Rudy Gay, I know a lot of that was one game because Rajon Rondo foul trouble. Ended up playing, I think it was only 18 minutes. But um, Rudy Gay against that New Orleans team that is just a horrible defensive team. He's certainly a guy that I'll throw in a couple GPPs. Yeah, I mean, especially because you you got to figure Rondo and Cousins are going to be the popular plays from that side. So I think Gay's always a nice contrarian move. Yep. Um other options, Otto Porter continues to play well. Got to like him. Chandler Parsons, who you mentioned, could get a nice bump if these guys sit out as well. As far as cheaper guys, C.J. Miles, the guy that randomly has these big games, doesn't have a very high floor, but with a guy no, like Rodney no Stuckey, Stuckey. Out, yeah, yeah he's, he's certainly got a chance to uh, hit value. Oh, one more guy, Shabazz Muhammad. 
right around 4K on both sites. Minutes bumping up, production bumping up. He's got three games of 20 or more real points in his last five. You worry a little bit about the floor, but with his minutes creeping into the 30s, if they stay there, you got to like his potential against Houston. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I played him, you know, a couple times before that Denver game where he had seven points in 16 <laughs> minutes. But since then, he's been really good. He's been consistent, um, shooting the ball well, and against the Houston defense that lacks defense. Um, yeah, I don't. I definitely don't mind taking a shot at small forward there with yeah. the cheap guy. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's possible that we see four of the top six most expensive players on uh, on FanDuel at power forward sit tonight. Um, Draymond Green likely to sit. Of course, Blake Griffin's out. Anthony Davis still nursing. Whatever the hell's wrong with him this time. Um, <laughs> Derek Favors, game time decision seemingly every night. So if all these guys sit, I mean, I think your kind of default top option is going to be Paul Millsap and with Chris Bosh not far behind. Yeah, definitely. Um, you gotta, like, I, Millsap's probably my favorite power forward tonight just because looking ahead at injuries, I mean, Millsap's my guy. You get him at a little bit of a cheaper price, and um, that matchup's great. Charlotte's been bad against power forwards this season, and Porzingis. I mean, how how can you say no if there's no Mello? It's the Porzingis show. Yeah, I mean, if Mello <laughs> sits, you're absolutely playing him. Um, he's in play either way because he's just not. I mean, he's got a really nice price tag, and coming off a really big game where I mean, 44 fantasy points and on Fanduel only played 27 minutes. So obviously. That matchup was a really nice one. It's a Brooklyn game, though, against Thad Young and company, and no one has ever sat around saying they think Thad Young is a good defender. So um, this could be another Porzingis game. Just just wait for his ownership to be probably one of the highest at any position tonight, I would imagine. Oh, definitely. I mean, you look at the last game against Brooklyn in 26 minutes, he puts up 41 fantasy points. So, I mean, the guy's he's good. He's just good. Play the guy. Yeah, he's, he's really good. And Cody Zeller, another guy that I think is interesting. He's cheap. He's playing in the mid-30s in minutes. Uh, I guess low to mid-30s. And facing Atlanta front court that just does not rebound. They don't defend well anymore. I mean, kind of fell off the face of the earth from last year. So, Zeller... Although in two games against Atlanta, struggled this year, I think he's certainly a guy that uh, I'm, I'm considering as a cheap punt option. Yeah, definitely I'm with you there. And um, if Gortat does sit tonight, Drew Gooden saw a big bump in minutes. Um, you know, he went 10 and 12 with three assists and a block and 27 minutes against Chicago. So I think that's certainly obtainable again here against Milwaukee. Yeah, certainly. Um, you're going to be looking at cheap guys down here. Um, Jabari Parker's been playing really well. He's cheap. Facing off against uh, Washington. You're going to see a lot of cheap guys for Washington on the opposite side of that one, of course, because, of course, Gortat is out. Chris Humphreys didn't, wasn't a shooter out again. Do you imagine he's going to sit again? So you're looking at guys like Drew Gooden. Went for 10 and 12 and 27 minutes last time. Nene, a little bit more expensive. He's your contrarian option, I guess. But he only played 20 minutes. He played well in those 20 minutes. But I think Drew Gooden is another one of those guys going to be really popular tonight. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially at power four where there's – very kind of concentrated value to where it's just three guys or so. So it's definitely going to be a little bit of a high ownership play, but I don't mind them. Yeah. Um, some injury concerns at center, of course. You've got Gortat, who is out. You've got Hassan Whiteside, questionable for this game. Sat out the last game. And obviously that would be a nice bump for guys like Chris Bosh. DeAndre Jordan, they said dealing with an illness, but is uh, was expected to play now seeing – downgraded to questionable didn't practice yesterday because he's sick so maybe both those guys get the night off we'll see how that goes but certainly those injury concerns but we're talking about the top player on the slate and seemingly every slate right now and that's DeMarcus Cousins I mean you're just playing him period and if you're not playing Cousins at least in your cash games and some in your tournaments then you're you're just doing it wrong I mean he's he's the best DFS play on the planet right now it's not close yeah I mean the guy's been insanely good average averaging 32 and 14 um, or the last four games. I mean, the guy's playing monster minutes. He's staying on the court. I'm crossing my fingers. I just, did, just didn't jinx it. Um, so he He's not Anthony out. Davis. He actually has muscle on his body. <laughs> yeah, but he could get thrown out. Could argue with the stripes. I don't know. But, I mean, he's going to be in 99.9% of my lineups tonight. Yeah, I mean, he's especially where you can play my power forward on DraftKings. I mean, with the utility. I mean, I there's enough value you can get him into most lineups, but... We'll give you a couple other options, of course. Greg Monroe, another guy, especially on DraftKings. He's playing really well recently. 28 and 10, 17 and 12 in his last two games. That double bo- double double bonus is nice. He's only 6,800 there. So he's certainly a guy that uh, I'm giving a look to. Um, outside of that, some cheaper guys that have been playing well. 
Um, you got Amir Johnson been playing really well recently. Um, as far as a cheap cash game option, I really don't mind him at all tonight. Yeah, definitely. I'm with you there. I mean, you kind of, you mentioned him kind of the couple, last couple of days there, and he's been a great play. So um, if I'm going cheap, I, I definitely don't mind him either. And don't forget about the Lopez twins. I'm just saying. Battling Robin each Lopez other. Lopez has been yeah. decent. He's been good. Dollar for dollar, Robin's beating Brooke right now. So, I mean, I guess you got to have <laughs> something against – I don't know if he's actually technically Big Brother. A minute or two, I mean, he, he's got to be because he's better. The hair might have popped be. out first. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so one of them came first. I'm imagining it's Brooke because he's a better player. But um, you got to imagine it'll be a fun one to watch either way. If you just don't want to watch good basketball, if you'd rather watch these two teams play. Yeah, and if the Knicks, I don't know, Knicks have a mascot. The Robin Lopez versus mascots is always fun to watch. I mean, I don't know what is the Knicks mascot. Is it like John Daly's pants? Like Knicks Rockers? <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm sure they got one. I don't. I don't watch the Knicks that much. You watch the Knicks to see Porzingis. Let's be honest about that. You don't worry yeah. about the mascot, and then you change you change the channel when he's not in the game. Yeah. All right, that'll wrap things up here for us. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out all of our other content at DailyFantasyCafe.com.